Volterra's 700-year-old city hall claims to be the oldest in Tuscany. Civic palaces like these were emblems of an era when city-states were strong. They were architectural exclamation points declaring that townspeople, rather than popes and emperors, were calling the shots. Towns like Volterra were truly city-states. They were fiercely independent and relatively democratic. They had their own armies, raised their own taxes, even had their own systems of weights and measures. A challenge for me in my guidebook writing is to take a slice of a town, like Volterra's main drag, and, with help from local guides, give travelers a peek into the culture. There's so much to see and learn, if you know where to look. Annie Adair, an American who fell in love with Volterra and one of its men, works here as a guide, and she's joining us to help out. So every Saturday morning when the town market is, is held, this little corner is where all of the farmers meet to discuss you know, how they're going to sell their wheat, what fertilizer they're going to use, or whatever they need to. That's just a tradition. They gather It's a tradition. Right every Saturday morning, you can see the farmers, usually with a wool vest, a nice old hat. How are your fava beans doing? Exactly. So Tuscan towns are filled with these little specialty stores where you can find meats and cheeses. And uh, there you got The king of the Tuscan forest, the, the wild boar, the wild boar, which is made into great sausages and ham hocks. And this is its leg, hairy on the outside, but prosciutto on the inside. Delicioso. So the city seems crowded today. Just imagine in the Middle Ages when there were four times as many people living within the city walls. Wow. And they'd have to build wooden additions and balconies hanging out over the street, so it's just a tangled mess of balconies and rooms. So these little nubs supported wooden add-on spaces. Exactly. Now that's one stout tower. It was actually the house tower or the home of a noble family in the 13th century. So it was a private home. It was a private home. Um, but it also served a defensive function. You'd see on the ground floor, there, this would have been where they would have had a store, but there was no interior staircase. So to get inside the house, they'd have to use a ladder up to that door above that's very narrow. So that's the front door of the house? That was the front door to get inside the house. And it was made so narrow so that you couldn't possibly get inside wearing armor. It turns out that quaint little Volterra was a significant player in both ancient Etruscan and Roman times. By ancient standards, Volterra was huge. Under the Etruscans, there were 25,000 inhabitants. 25,000, yeah. wow. And about five centuries later, yeah. under the Romans, there were just as many people. And they built this theater down here to seat up to 2,000 spectators. So under all of this, there's Roman ruins, just like this. Just about anywhere you dig, you can find something that's Roman. Wow. 